just uh, hmm? once again uh, good morning everybody and uh, thank you madan and uh, bharat for giving a good introduction to me uh, as bharat said you know i love standing in front of uh, students and every student at every age isn't it so i come here to tell something share my experience i don't know whether i have come here to teach you or i myself will learn and go back so many a times it has happened i am sure it will happen here as well so it is mutual i, I would be learning a lot of things sir uh, <clears throat> from this institute as well i have a lot of things actually to share with you it cannot be shared in uh, one session of uh, one hour okay so it's uh, yes if i am able to put everything in this one hour of all my uh, all of you must be um, much lesser in age uh, when i tell when i started my journey of solar the first solar cell i produced in the country it was in 1982 so in 1994 we produced the highest efficiency solar cells that was in uh, that was uh, almost about 13.6% today we have about 25% efficiency we have touched that so uh, i consider myself to be very lucky if i were uh, born too early i would not have seen those great startup days if i had grown uh, born too late you know if i had born early i would have not seen these developments you know i would not have used even uh, the iphones and all you know so just as mahatma gandhi died without seeing the pc without seeing the iphones you see so i would have missed all these things i'm i'm like here than mahatma gandhi actually so take take it very lightly yeah but you know if somebody is there you know mr dr baki said he is like here than mahatma gandhi and you know, uh, no press me, this thing and all okay <laughs> so treat everything very lightly if you sit very heavily you can't uh, uh, absorb you be like a sponge okay so i was born in right time so that i could see the i am an electronics engineer myself electronics and communication and we used to fight for one computer it was not computer like this it used to be z80 it is everything open you know all electronics engineers joining and seeing the computer like this you know i used to see computer where 25 35 people are there you know to see one that chip z80 chip you know and the transistors used to be the tubes and we used to study only about transistors electronic transistors in the books but you know very rarely we used to uh, see them so such is the journey and later we saw you see the technological developments very huge actually so uh, that's why i am saying you know uh, i am i'm so happy that you know the journey has been exactly i'm at zero and uh, see the past and the future and even the future i'm going to see that's the most interesting thing a lot of things have happened actually in the lot of things have developed which you will be uh, surprised to see them you know uh, i know you all uh, are electrical engineers uh, most of you all of you good uh, those who give shocks you give shock but you know, i don't give shock actually but uh, i am also deadly because i am a dc i generate dc so i also give shock but it is very dangerous yours is a wave form you know mine is a very so we have to main so i don't know i i behave like a, i'm like a child you know i um, uh, in fact you know when i go to the field you know my wife gives a lot of uh, this thing says you know 
so you don't know about electrical this thing to stand away from the this thing. so and it's a fact actually many times you know if i treat my engineers sir sir don't touch that cabin that cupboard so that's very dangerous even the fuse you know we don't know where which to place where and what should be the current and all these things so i am the dc man the solar cells actually generate dc current actually so dc is converted into ac through inverters and you are all there to manage that actually i am very proud to be here because i met mr madan uh, who ex explained about what he is doing here when i double e it's a great uh, institute because you know actually for me uh, the institute should be like you know uh, something like a campus and uh, i i would like to see a lot of trees and you know only few buildings here and there not like sr nagar uh, this thing you know but a person here standing and making in the sr nagar which is of course vidyanagar we call uh, sr nagar as vidyanagar uh, <clears throat> everybody speaks about training skill development and all but here this man is actually pulling people like us giving the hands on experience to the fresh graduates so we recruit lot of people from uh, uh, universities it's very sad that you know as soon as they roll out from the colleges they are very very uh, poor this thing i was also like that actually you don't have to feel shy if you did not know a lot of uh, A learning takes place. A lot of learning takes place, uh, basically uh, outside the college. Probably you learn only. If I say a figure, it is only. I would say only twenty percent. I think it is much more in the colleges. Let me tell you. I I did not know anything about solar. in my graduation in it karnataka surat kal engineering college i think you must be knowing when i studied five years ours was a five years course last but one batch for four years you know for five i studied five years a lot of uh, uh, i did not even know uh, what is solar except one thing there is a spelling of solar so uh, bharat was mentioning about prana for institute gtj and in fact uh, bharat will give some uh, link to madan ji so you will do some google research today it is google guru you know everything is available so uh, you some of you might be thinking that you know what is this dr baski parki is going to speak we have google yes most of it uh, when i say uh, you will get it in the google actually please remember one thing you will get what you want in your life you will get what you want your life in your life but do you know what you want in your life you will get everything in google but do you know what you want from the google so that's where the institute like this will come into picture and that's what you know his expertise so is going to take and let me tell you this you are in the right place because there is no institute that constitutes so much knowledge imparting that is practical whether you pick up or not does not matter he, what he is doing is he is putting you to the the right places to the right people to the right network so you will walk your path that's very important so uh, did you get that did you did you get that video ha huh. you, you, you can it is not here huh? okay no no problem 
uh, okay so i had a video now i'll start my i mean i, I, I have not started my uh, speech or lecture now i am starting okay uh, <clears throat> i don't know where to start because there is so much so when you are in doubt where to start think of the sun and he will give the solution i i, I just have something you know i i know some question marks are raising in all of your minds we are going to work on something where you can imagine or cannot imagine that that university probably probably his uh, uh, nie will also become that way the place where the sun never sets can you imagine this the campus where sun never sets the sun university where you cannot i mean rather you can see even in the midnight you go there that place and you can see the sun i am not giving any metaphor you are all engineers i am an engineer we have worked out a project with isro where you can track the sun 24/7 and you will have the sun rays coming to your campus whichever is that place whether it is in hyderabad in karnataka or in uh, bhubaneswar or wherever on the planet so but it is guided through like that how is it possible to do that so far so far nobody has done it but there is many more interesting thing that has that have happened happening you can think of elon musk he is trying to take us to the space with this space ex program so the sun university where in that campus where the sun rays are coming through a geosynchronous satellite which will track the sun 24/7 and that will guide the sunlight through a optical binocular and focus it to the place where you want all 24/7 whole world will be coming to see the sun at night of course now we are seeing the sun america is uh, uh, sleeping now and next it will come there another 11 12 hours but the point is we, we we the to see the sun at one place 24/7 what does it do? what is it going to do so that's the tag line is the place where sun never sets and let me tell you one more thing i am not i'm 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 coming here as a solar expert solar experienced person some people used to say earlier you know it's a non conventional energy sources it is not non conventional how can the power the energy that comes directly from through the sun is non conventional sun power is the primary source of energy for everything let me shock you even the hydel energy is the solar energy even the wind energy is the solar energy even the coal based energy is the sun energy how earth earth was taken birth first or sun was sun from the sun the earth from the earth you get that fossil fuels billions of years almost about 4 and 1/2 billion years you have collected those fossils okay so that is also because of the sun only imagine imagine the plant can it survive without the sun what is he doing actually he is sitting billions of kilometers away and uh, what is he doing he is only giving the light but the mother earth is actually doing everything else so but there is a total synchronous melancholy available within both of them so one is the star the other is the this so we just imagine that you know everything that comes as an energy is in the form of solar energy 
so although i will be speaking about this thing so somewhere down the line we have to keep your keep your uh, mind very open how you are going to connect to all these things okay uh, <clears throat> i am going to rush through the this thing so you are smart and intelligent enough to capture the slides so is it uh, clear the i mean uh, for you people to see okay i just want to ensure that you know uh, you are able to see the clear picture here okay oh yeah you they are going to see the this thing i don't know i mean where, I mean, where? this side huh? here okay is this one so this is likely higher doesn't matter can i stand here here no it's okay yeah yeah this is better okay so uh, some of the slides i will only show i may not uh, explain because you are all very intelligent and you can relate okay so this is very it is not a favorite uh, pick for me but it is a very critical picture the which almost 25 years ago uh, see the a vulture is standing there ready to eat its its food is ready actually there but only one thing it is waiting for the child to die it is still having life that means the vulture will never kill and eat it will eat only the dead animals we are also animals so now while the vulture has found its food man you know this uh, mother has left and she is going towards uh, towards uh, the food camp she has no energy so she has already left and so it's a burden for her this is a sudan picture i forgot the <clears throat> this this is a pulitzer award winning the man the photographer who take took this picture he suicided after one month because it had started hunting what happened to this because he saw the vulture standing just about one or two meters away okay so uh, what i am going to convey in this in solar session you can always link okay this you can see you are able to see am i blocking no okay <clears throat> you are able to see this and we are able to see this not in the computer we are seeing it everywhere in hyderabad and every everywhere we walk okay this one most of you must be driving and this is very very what shall i say nasty ugly you can use all synonyms okay so we all come from the nature we are the nature and we are part of the nature the earth is the only place in the world in the universe as of now let us leave it to elon musk you will find out one more earth i think one more earth is there which is two and a half times bigger than our earth okay this is the only place in the entire universe where we know that life exists okay but that won't be true forever life may get extinct okay so in this picture what you see this uh, bubble is there no it's just a water that water drop is not a drop what i have done that volume to this earth and this volume the globe it is actually the entire water on the surface of the earth put in the drop and it will be only this you are able to understand this relation don't think that you know earth is covered with only two third that's a wrong statistics it is statistics for very old people not intelligent people like you am i right you agree with me so if you take all that water on the surface 
and put it in the form of a globe or a drop and it with respect to the earth diameter it will be only this okay so light is the barometer of development why i say this uh, bharat was uh, telling you you might have seen my picture holding the lantern so uh, the kerosene lamp is a deadly it's like a i call it as a bomb is uh, so many uh, villagers die by kerosene burning and uh, okay so i wanted to replace it through a safe efficient solar lamp that's how we worked out uh, that uh, particular is brand name is uh, nest's brand name is a uh, nest's company's brand product is the aishwarya aishwarya solar lamp you can find it in google also in youtube also uh, there is a bbc world made a film footage about uh, uh, so here light is the barometer of development wherever there is darkness it is underdeveloped wherever there is light more light it is the mark of development the temperature rise what is the, the normal temperature of human being no in in, in terms uh, yeah how much correct you are right in fahrenheit 98.2 yeah 98.2 so now uh, uh, one uh, one lady called uh, one number doctor uh, my uh, my my husband is having a fever he is having 98.2 degree centigrade then the doctor said so this is the wrong number you please call the fire fighting engine if it is 98.2 degree centigrade what will happen we will not be 55% 60% burn you will become ash okay so now just about 1.6 degree centigrade rise is going to take the world and you know you are all see how many people are here who are staying close to uh, low lying uh, uh, coastal areas like uh, of course you are not from bangladesh and all so uh, maybe coastal areas they face a lot of problems odisha and all you know so now the the ice in the summit is going to be melted and it is going to come down as water and the sea level is going to be rising london is going to go bangladesh is going to be submerged if we don't really take enough care now itself we have already done the damage within 100 years we have done the damage now damage control we are trying to do that's what we are all trying to do here with more efficient things even whatever we have invented we have to use them efficiently that's what we are going to learn here and you also try to understand what are the other side i need to understand as much as what is the electrical side how it can be done bring the experts try to transmit i mean transport the power more efficiently all these kinds of things okay just about 1 and 1/2 degree centigrade is going to create the havoc just as 98.2 degrees just add 0.8 degrees it's not even 1 degree centigrade uh, fahrenheit we feel as if you know the whole body is in fire so we feel that much same is also with the mother earth see 0.8 degrees or 1 degree fahrenheit is going to create so much of havoc in our body then imagine how much it is going to create the same amount of rise the mother earth okay that's the same thing so how long the oil reserve is going to last i have put the figure here you must be having different figure maybe 200 year 300 years no it is going to be lasted only 55 years or even 15 years if you have heard me wrong also you are right okay if the world's population lived like per square kilometer and you can see here uh, what does, does it mean you know you can see bangladesh 
uh, from there to bottom you come, United States, okay? That means they need 5.4. If everybody in the world lived like Americans, they spend so much energy for heating, for cooling, for everything they need energy. Because that's the mark of advancement. What's your name? Harsha Vardhan. Good. If I ask Harsha Vardhan a question, uh, so how much water you use per day? Four liters. Is it right? Is somebody using more or even less? More, no? Much more. You, you go and calculate, okay? And if I ask Harshavardhan a question, I, you have choice to make. I'll give two choice, not about water. Now, oxygen. I will give you oxygen. I will hold in one hand oxygen cylinder and I will hold in one hand. Uh, I cannot hold, you're all electrical engineers. What is Barky talking? You know, you cannot hold electricity, energy in the hand, electricity. So I have uh, um, uh, oxygen here. I have energy or electricity, whatever you call. You have to choose only one. Which one will you choose? Oxygen? Yes. Obviously, but let my answer is different. Please, you know, you give me the energy, electricity, I will manufacture oxygen. Such is the importance of electricity. You got it? Okay. So now, if America or even United States, the Emirates, United Arab Emirates, you know, they don't have anything, but they are living like, can I have water, please? So, they need 5.4 Earth. If everybody, if everybody lived like Americans, we need not one Earth, one Earth resources into 5.4. It is available, this is taken from Google. This is not my statistics. You can lay your hands and it will come to you. So I have not heard the statistics. This is like uh, normal water. No? <laughs> so, no, no, anyway, I'm showing everybody and drinking. So there is no confusion. Good one. Color is good. And you know, it does not spill on my white shirt. So, this is, uh, you should keep this in mind uh, every day. <clears throat> this is uh, Bharat, uh, I think he is very good in. Uh, 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 footprint, uh, we'll speak a little later. If I leave some time for him. <laughs> so he will speak about that. This is called footprint. What is your foot size? Let me ask you. Eight. So who has got nine? Somebody must be there here. I'm looking for some. Yeah, you must be having eight and a half, nine. Ten, see. <laughs> so his, foot, his footprint is bigger than his. So he has to walk a little carefully so that he does not step onto other's foot. Be careful about him. See, the footprint of the carbon footprint, you might have heard, no? See, I'm speaking a lot of these things and uh, when is Dr. Barkey going to come onto the electrical engineering? So you will forget, you will, uh, Forgive me for my structuring. I'm see, I I'm a non-conventional energy man here. So my speaking will be unconventional. Do you agree? I mean, do you accept? Okay, good. Thank you. So a little bit the diary much. So okay. So see the this thing here. Uh, this side, Kuwait, 
up to Ireland. Yeah, their uh, uh, this is uh, Qatar, United States. Their footprint is very big. This is another way of uh, putting it. Uh, the the previous slide. Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, another one here. The other end, you see, these are the countries who are actually the most uh, ecologically living people. Ecological balance. We eat more than we require. Of course, I do eat actually. I eat more. So that is for my stomach. You know, I don't eat for my health. I eat for my tongue. Taste. You know, you can eat for my <laughs> okay, so please note that we are taking, we are gobbling more from the nature than we need. That's the point. Okay. So How much uh, time do you think that you know we'll be left with uh, coal? Let me rush. We you need coal, you know, for doing coal energy. See, this statistic is very disturbing. You are only producing, you are only trying to understand who somebody is manif uh, I mean, somebody is making energy and you know how to put it in place. But you should know for you to stay in the job and the job, that energy will come forever. No, it is not going to. Okay. See, 90 gigawatt worth coal-fired power projects. And Next, only Australia has a lot of, uh, uh, Australia has a bit more than India. India has 60 billion tons of coal. Maybe they might have, this is about uh, one or two years old uh, data. They might have discovered some more, but it is not good. But our population has increased, our demand, our, our consumption has increased. So therefore, you know, it is going to compensate there. My statistics is still, so these factors make it clear that alternatives to fossil fuel need to be found. Do I need to say this? No, because you are here today because you understand that. I'm only substantiating a few facts, but you are smart guys. You have already come here to be part of the solar energy journey. Carbon dioxide, I, mean, I don't want to go in more details. See, we have a lot of issues to tackle, uh, growing energy consumption, <clears throat> depleting coal stock, greenhouse gas emissions. You understand greenhouse gas emissions? They are also called GHGs. Then mounting oil bills, energy security, and social cost of mining. And do you know, mining is not supposed to be the, the modern man's choice. Old people did it, so now we we are not supposed to continue with that. So to tackle all these things, there is one solution, plug into the sun. As they say, a picture says more than thousand words. This is again, a few things here and there I added, but uh, it is uh, one of the Institute, Fraun of Institute's uh, presentation. And you can see here, this, it came in a Velux magazine. And they're all relative. I don't speak the numbers now. You can find the numbers. You can derive the numbers out of this, take the scale and make it the numbers will be same. See the solar energy, and these are actually, so I left my, this thing, I'll take it. <clears throat> Pointing is this, no? See, uh, this is the, this much energy solar is there. This is world energy consumption required. This is world energy use. Whereas these are the renewable energies, hydro, biomass, solar, and all this solar is here, wind. And these are all our world fossil fuels. Okay. But see, I'll give now one statistics. So we will be very happy to hear this. In one hour, that is 60 minutes. In 60 minutes, you capture the sunlight and convert that into electricity within 60 minutes. Actually, what does it mean? I'm telling you, 
in terms of the number. Within one hour of the sunlight striking the earth, mother earth surface and convert that into solar energy <clears throat> with the same efficiency what we have today. We don't have to have advanced technologies. We just have to convert the same thing with the available energy, I mean uh, efficiency. And that is sufficient. That solar energy that you have captured within one hour or 60 minutes, converted into electricity, that is sufficient for the entire world, energy requirement, not for that day, for the entire year. Is it sounding very, and it is a very profound thing. And you are all here today, but we have to do it efficiently so that whatever, there are some, there are some shocks, some things which uh, solar energy, how clean is the clean energy technology? How renewable is the renewable energy technology? Those things, if I keep telling you, you'll get disturbed. I will not touch those subjects. Okay. <clears throat> you know him? No, he invented bulb. Bulb is not able, we are not able to see the bulb. Things have advanced so much. And in fact, these LEDs are also going to go. You know, I, was, I myself was shocked when Bharat sent me one link uh, two days ago. What is that? Karba Shav. Karda Shav, I think you should uh, Google that. And uh, the, what all the kind of energy that we need in the future, for the future man. And all that is going to be available. But all this, so I am going to speak now is going to be scrap. So therefore, I am telling you, don't take today for granted. Yes, yesterday is Today for granted you take because you know today you try to do most at most because yesterday is dead and tomorrow you don't know. That's philosophical thing but we are not here to speak philosophy. But today you need to understand what is going to be our future. Okay. So he, he said more than 100 years ago solar is the future. We think that you know we just 30, 40 years, 30 years ago, we came to solar. But this man, he said, I will put all my money into solar. What else you want? So you are investing your time in solar now. So you are smart guys. That's what I was telling. Now I'm getting into the serious uh, technology. Already I have taken so much of time. Still I have not come to the subject. Okay. Now. You know the subject, but you know, I'm just trying to give you a little bit here and there. Okay. See the solar technology options, solar photovoltaics. What is photovoltaics? Sorry. Yeah, can anybody tell what is solar photovoltaics? You have the answer. What's your name? Huh? Imran. I think you have the answer. What is, I mean, just in your own words, and this definition will be right. The definition will be right. I'm telling you, I guarantee you. Tell me, what is solar energy? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Perfect answer. Yes, Imran, you have done quite well. He said the same thing. In the beginning itself, I defined it. I'm a DC man, you are electrical. And that's what he is trying to link. Definitions need not be learned. Ohm's law, we know it. So please take us. Thank you. See, solar energy is nothing but converting sunlight into electricity. That's all. It's very simple, no? You all, for a moment, you felt that you know, I am asking very difficult question. I myself have not, did not know these definitions there. I discovered. 
don't believe in all the published you discover you find out that's why i said very confidently imran has the answer you know it okay so uh, here you have thin film you have crystalline you have concentrated solar i will ask madan to invite me again to tell all these things huh? so all these things you know probably uh, you will learn i don't have to tell concentrated solar is there concentrated the light is concentrated and one cell but how we we are all engineers how we handle that to handle that much of heat two times three times one sun two sun three sun okay and we have solar thermal the other side you know you have to forgive me huh? i will take time because now i am tempted to speak more that's why i thought you know, they they are all very good friends so i can speak more okay and you are ready to forego your lunch no that is not possible okay see after i became electronics engineer actually i wanted to become a civil engineer yeah. because you know i am i am i am nenu paltunu vaallu adi chepte correct untundi adhe na telugu manchiga raadu so nenu kannada speaking but anyway you understand my telugu so um i used to see only civil engineer means what they are in the 82 and 9 so that time what is the engineer we used to see only whom civil engineers building the roads building the bridge building houses no electrical engineer no electronics engineer no software engineers isn't it so actually unfortunately i scored more actually in my inter unfortunately and what happened you know what happened uh i was in the queue and i was supposed to get my this thing so i thought uh, i will get uh, civil engineering so i was in the queue um, not like this competitive exams only on our certificates so what happened uh, so i was sitting and i mean standing in the queue and then they were asking me a question so uh, what what branch you want to take so, civil then they said uh, uh, oh, civil you will get here people are asking for electronics electronics was a craze that time you will easily get here everybody will do that so you can take it is that so uh, what's your score and i said 97 percent then i you know what yeah in canada he sp- spoke in his own slang i don't want to use that he said what is this 97 percent you want to become civil engineer so electronics any you take you ask for electronics any any college you will get actually uh, and he we put a fire i mean some kind of a confusion in me what is electronics i never even heard so what is this is confusion ho gaya then uh, okay my turn came so by the time i was actually sunk okay i wanted to do something new okay so everybody is saying take this thing here electronics so then i fell for that you know then uh, i became electronics uh, engineer and five years i studied actually third year also i was not satisfied because there is nothing to be seen here electronics so communication i can't even see electronics you know what is this bridge i mean in a civil bridge i can see road i can see but the electronics maja nahi aa raha actually can you can you see electricity yes you should say yes sir i can feel it i have felt several time but you know i have survived through to tell you this story okay so i was uh, yes electronics was good okay study and all this with all those uh, uh, actually you know you order some food in the hotel but after somebody uh, uh, waiter carrying somebody else's food they said i should have ordered that same thing happened with me for my engineering okay so i came i came after five years you know my my parents are some impression they know they don't even know that i am studying engineering although they know that you know he is studying 
So I came back with the, this thing, you know, and uh, I said, I have become an electronics engineer. Now I will search for the job and all these things. You know, they started asking me questions. Then I had no answers. What? Electronics engineer. Then, uh, yes, electronics engineers. You know, I took half an hour to tell them what it is. You know, finally, I had to give them an example. We used to have uh, that Philips radio. You, none of you might have seen. If you come from villages, you know, olden days, that Philips radio with a tube. Okay? We, we used to have that uh, radio. So, then I said, radio, radio is there. Television was not there at the time. <laughs> so, this radio, we manufacture this and we do all this so inside parts and all these things. That is the knowledge I have. I told in my Kannada language and all these things. You know, finally, what my mother and all the people surrounded there said, oh, actually, there used to be one uh, town, it's not even a city town, you know, they used to take, uh, they know it actually. They said, oh, you are a radio mechanic. Big balloon. So, yeah. <laughs> so, this is what happened actually. That is what is the reality. And uh, Elon Musk balloon also going to be to say. But I want it to be this thing. You know, we study. Is I'm not sharing these things with a, uh, a stint of uh, negativity. But, you know, these are all the fact of life. Okay? So, there is parabolic trap on the other side. Why I narrated this? You know, uh, solar means, you know, that time, solar means only water heater. Today, at least people know that it is electricity. PV, solar energy. Nobody knew actually. What is a solar photovoltaic? So earlier, you know, it's water heater. So it is actually different. So please understand this. The sunlight, the ray, the ray that comes from the sun, one ray you take, when it comes, that ray has two components. Can anybody tell quickly in 10 seconds? Yes. Another one? Photon? Eh? No, no, I'm, yeah, both are in the same, this thing. Light and heat. I'm, I'm putting here two things. This is light, that is heat. What is water heater here? In Hyderabad, you know, when we came in 1994, we didn't have any solar. Uh, Water heater on the top, when we opened our tap, bus karke steam agaya in the summer. So you don't need any. So that is the solar thermal water heater. So what is there? Just some only thing, you know, the pipe, copper pipe they are doing like this so that within the same small area, you get more energy, heat energy, transfer. But here it is. The light energy, whatever you say, photon energy, the photon energy, the waveforms in the waveform, that has the power to convert the semi through the semiconductor element electricity. Okay. Okay. Uh, there is thin film. I will tell, concentrate only on this thing. I am not going getting into the heat. I am only a light man. Okay. Uh, thin film, what is crystalline, what is thin film? Now we are getting serious into the subject, okay? The lower consumption of silicon because it is a thin film, very, very thin film, and higher output. If I forget to use this, you know, please tell me because I generally don't like electronic gadgets. I like to use my own voice box and just joking, okay? So, <laughs> Okay, so uh, you can see here, higher output per unit install capacity under the diffused light also. See, uh, the crystalline needs a direct light, whereas the thin film, even in the diffused light, even in the cloudy area, a time, it will convert that diffused light also into electricity. And CPU concentrated uh, this thing, very high efficiency. We call in our engineering, uh, uh, solar engineering uh, uh, jargon, 
STC. STC is uh, uh, standard test conditions. So 100 milliwatts per centimeter square, air mass 1.5, and temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. The condition which we never get in the field. In the laboratory, we achieve that to check the solar panels. Okay, that is a standard test condition. So that is 100 milliwatts per centimeter square or 1000 watts per meter square. Both are same. You go to any data sheet of solar panels. The sun simulator tested solar panels will have the tested under these conditions. 100 milliwatts per centimeter square or 1000 watts per meter square. So here in this case, that will be very, very high. And means we concentrate the sunlight two times, four times, three times, whatever the technology. We don't deal that with here. And this is a crystalline. This is a time tested, proven with long life and suitable for grid and off-grid applications. So you have seen the uh, crystalline silicon modules. Some of you must have seen already. Raise the hands. Oh, none. None of you have seen modules? Oh my God, I should have brought one solar pan. You have modules, no? You have, they have not yet seen. Can you bring one module from them? Can you tell them? Yeah, okay. Some disadvantages for everything, okay? Nothing comes with only advantages, huh? We all know it. Remember that, okay? See here, it's a lower efficiency, higher capex, capex is capital expenditure, and long-term stability issue, it is not proven, and critical R&D is required for all these things. CPV, here also there is a problem. When you concentrate more, light, so much heat is coming, you don't know how to handle it. So efficiency is very high, 40% you will get. But uh, in the field, why they have not come? Basically because we have not engineered very well these uh, uh, concentrated PV. Although they have been, they, there are some few, so a few solar power plants, okay? And the crystalline is the most proven thing. And in this thing, this also I just want to touch base. We have cadmium telluride, which is uh, now doing very well. In thin film, in thin film, we have. I, I will discuss about that. You will uh, uh, see that. Uh, which are all the uh, categories? Which are all the uh, uh, technologies actually? Uh, the copper indium diselenide, uh, uh, cadmium telluride, and uh, uh, what is the other one, uh, Bharat? Uh, CIS and um, GIS, CIGS, CIGS, okay? These are, yeah, uh, that is uh, indium, germanium, selenium, okay? Under the thin film, we have all these things. Cadmium uh, amorphous is there, that's what. That was the first one which came, but you know, it has its own uh, stabler Ronsky effect, but later CIGS was added. So these thin film technologies have one problem or the other, but uh, cadmium telluride has emerged as that's the first solar one company, an US based company, which has come out with uh, the best uh, technology, which is almost giving competition to the crystalline silicon technology. Okay. Uh, this is a total value chain. Uh, you can see I'll uh, uh, quickly brush through. Uh, this is the module, this is the cell. Wafer, ingot, polysilicon, MG silicon. Uh, you are okay? Yeah, I'll send here. No. It's okay? Yeah, you should have told earlier, no? Before. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. See here, uh, see, this is the solar panel. Uh, I asked you how many people have seen the solar model? No hands raised. <laughs> so then I felt no uh, coming to this itself is a very big uh, task for you. So, but anyway, don't worry. They're all very simple things. 
so uh, we uh, they are going to take you so shortly uh, to solar power plants i think uh, uh, which is uh, what we are going to learn uh, how they are yeah we can keep it uh, here yeah akar bartara yeah ha huh. okay that's good yeah it is there no yeah 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 good so yeah on the top great it's like you know we, we cannot do the uh, purchasing selling of a buffalo without seeing the buffalo and people are doing it you know one fellow almost purchased it then he said where is the where is the buffalo then you know he said see look at that where the buffalo will be there all of you know if the palatur wall unte pakka telusu ekkada edo oka lake lo untadi burada ekkada untado akkada correct ah akkada untadu kada so aina chupichadi who sold the the one who sold showed see look at that then is there then this fellow went running and then he, there was a rope actually when he pulled it you know what came only the horns came he said where is the it is fully immersed before this thing you know he said it is under the water but only so and you know why i am saying it is not a joke huh? it has happened so you should be aware that you know in the modern world we have lot of these kind of things happen in a technological level also and uh, how many people want to become an entrepreneur you are only seeking jobs and he is going to prepare you people to become the entrepreneurs to give jobs not to see only seek jobs any hands that to raise i close my eyes and then try to see open and see yeah oh now after opening my eyes they are raising <laughs> good 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 so then you should uh, meet uh, it's very good huh? that's very important you know you be the person who give jobs not take the job okay now everybody say yes once again yes. great atma nirbharta is coming here atma nirbharta self reliant india if everybody wants job where you is pandemic time me i mean where are the jobs sir those who want to give job also are becoming jobless sir so that's that's why i'm saying you know you should all work hard to be entrepreneurs see now what you see here is the solar panel and our latest advanced technology solar panel is as big as um uh, almost uh, three times of this if somebody can look back uh, the door you can see the door door size entire that big size is it not three times of this yes it's almost three meters it has come three meters two meters very big uh, yeah now we have reached uh, 800 watts uh, the latest uh, efficiency modules 800 watts okay so it just registers this and we can uh, proceed for the uh, module require cells what you see inside our cells actually and then the cells to make solar cells you need wafer and to make wafer silicon wafer you need ingots silicon ingot we call the crystal growth you can catch these are the catch words if you just put on the google you will get uh, plenty of information and any doubt you can come back to madan or me okay so now that's not all to make this we need polysilicon and to get polysilicon the input is here we get actually mg silicon mg silicon is nothing but metallurgical grade silicon so you see here what is this quartz sio2 silicon dioxide 
silicate in the form of silicate so si o2 silicon dioxide uh, uh, yeah in the next slide i think we have uh, that you know, I, i'll move forward uh, oh sorry <clears throat> I see here the process steps of the Jacrowski. So, uh, even after 35, 40 years, I'm not able to pronounce it properly. Jacrowski, we call the Russian scientist. I, I think it is not the uh, Jacrowski. Yeah, he's a uh, he's not a Russian. I thought he is was a Russian. He's a Polish man, a scientist. Uh, several uh, years ago, he invented uh, how to make this uh, process using uh, uh, polysilicon uh, how to how to make there's a big crucible here so uh, let me tell you uh, uh, you see here can anyone give me a figure at what temperature a quartz can melt any idea more than 2000 degrees centigrade that's the reason why initially solar used to be very costly now it is cheaper than our fossil fuel based the kilowatt hour the energy the the rupees per unit of the fossil fuel based technology is around 5 rupees 6 rupees whereas solar has reached 3 rupees 3 and a half rupees so today we are much much above so this is the amount of temperature 2000 degrees to melt this get mg silicon then poly ingot wafer solas and each of these are an industry each of these are an industry and it is so unfortunate that in india we don't have all these things we have only these two and we are depending on china and all other countries for this it is very unfortunate so uh, you think that it is only this we take this uh, in so many and we go to the uh, power plant and we put them and we get the electricity but you know there is so much behind actually do i need to know all these things sir? you may ask a question so yes you need to we, you, you, you cannot understand little if you don't get into more. If, if, you, if you want to understand in detail, then what, everything is linked together. Okay? Uh, see here? Uh, sorry. Uh, this is basically uh, crystal growth. And you can see the rod is coming here and the final one is like this okay uh, the same thing what i showed there um, is the same like you know modules uh, both are same you know one looks blue and the other looks black okay uh, depending on the uh, air coating uh, material they use okay solar cells and wafers before making solar cells this is in gauze see this is both are in gauze what is this which looks like a, a jaggery uh, uh, bellum laga kanpistundi this is actually uh, monocrystalline in got monocrystalline so can somebody say what is this one yes this is uh, this is polycrystalline or mono uh, multi crystalline we call it as multicrystalline or polycrystalline monocrystalline or single crystalline single crystal monocrystal see poly is actually if you closely observe there will be more crystals are uh, in this this thing so in in subsequently you can see here very much uh, you can see here see these are poly you can you can see they are not uh, plain surface like okay so but whereas this ones mono where it is a single crystal mono one crystal okay and there is one more thing uh, where you can recognize by visual observation 
So here you see all are square, are rectangle. Okay, he, he, you can see here square. They are actually square, but these are pseudo square. You can see the edges trimmed. They are not trimmed actually. You have the board. Uh, can I have pen? Yeah, you can see here. Uh, this is the cylinder, and you have okay cylinder. And what I do, uh, I cut here. Okay. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, here, here, and here. So I left here. That's what you are seeing there. So that means I chop off this. For what? See, next what I do, I slice these things uh, with the wire saw, like the bread saw are cut, you know, in the bakery, exactly like that. Uh, this thing will come here and there'll be around 180 microns, just 180 microns, 0.18 mm, okay? The thickness of the wafer, what you see there is, is one, uh, 0.18 uh, or 180 microns, okay? So now, this is how you got it. It is not that you, know, you have trimmed these uh, corners, okay? Why? Because if I make the round wafers and we lose the packing density, this material will again go back uh, to the process, okay? Uh, this is uh, uh, the material metallurgical grade uh, silicon and there's a specification from this silicon. And this is a poly silicon. I'm just, uh, I have not brought the material to show you here. So uh, I thought you get the feel of this material, how it looks like. So this one is actually MG silicon and that is converted into the poly silicon, okay? And in nutshell, you can see here, um, uh, this is the uh, wafer line, this is the cell line, and this is the module line, manufacturing. And I'm not showing you how the ingot is made. I have, I, I have to speak all those things, you know. I'm just opening your lid today. Uh, I look forward, I can come again and explain you, okay? So um, here, uh, you yourself can uh, do self-tutoring in the direction with which uh, I have given you these. Uh, materials. Okay, so here, uh, uh, polysilicon is uh, got and all these things put together, and each one is a process here, and then how the texturization of the surface is done of the cell of the wafer, and then edge isolation diffusion is a PIN. Uh, the the solar cell is uh, nothing but a PN junction diode, which you are aware. That's why I'm not getting into the uh, this thing. Uh, so. Uh, here, uh, anti-reflection coating and then printing. The Whatever the lines you see, they are 99.9% pure silver, okay? That's uh, the, the finger, uh, this thing, aluminum, our standard uh, uh, structure is uh, like this. Uh, this is the uh, silicon and this is N, this is P. There's a phosphorus diffusion here. This is uh, negative. PoCl3 is the basically phosphorus oxide chloride in the diffusion furnace. We deposit and then drive it through uh, the junction. The junction formation is done. Of course, you know, you have a lot of uh, uh, processes like, you know, edge isolation and all these things. So I'm not getting into those things and you, they're all available for you. Okay. So this is. Solar cell is nothing but a PN junction diode. And you need to, I mean, when you, you need not have to get into the uh, architecture. And also, um, if somebody is interested, we can always uh, discuss about those things, okay? And in the solar module, you can see uh, the cell and the tabbing, you know, what happens, you can see here, uh, each cell is connected here to this. All these cells are actually, uh, can somebody, can you come here? Just to show the back side. See, uh, they're all series connected, okay? 
so series will make it more voltage okay and the current remains the same i can go to parallel also i can make it parallel also so all those cells negative to positive positive to negative neg positive to negative like that you come all those suppose if they are 72 cells and this is much lesser cells um 72 cells we use the advanced technologies i will tell you how what are the other uh, forms of uh, uh, this thing uh, you can see here this is called a terminal box or junction box is a junction box not in your electrical junction box this is a module junction box where uh, you have um, here uh, positive negative and also there is a there are three diodes um can we just put it back thank you um uh, see three di bypass diodes are there what happens see um i was not intended to tell all these things yeah come come see suppose if uh, the module if i if i if this is under the sun if i close this cell what will happen yeah it does not generate electricity rest if there let us say there are about 36 cells in this 35 cells are generating but one is not generating okay so what will happen instead of becoming generator this cell becomes consumer it will become a heat it will become sink so all that energy is going and going getting dumped the differential you know whatever is it is not able to match with the other cells it is actually uh, uh, getting uh, lost in the form of heat and anything you know any loss in the form of heat even in our body okay so that cell will get heated up and then we call it as a hot spot and it will it will become uh, eventually a catastrophic failure we have uh, and i will just uh, touch that subject also how we identify uh, from the drones the new advanced technologies uh, earlier we used to go and check uh, each and everything now we have thermal cameras and we go and check uh, like you know uh, if i take the picture of this of a power plant or using the drones using the drone when we do and wherever particular shading or the cell crack because of these things if it is not generating power it gets heated up we have the uh, ir camera infrared camera along with the uh, rgb camera and we take the picture of the whole power plant and also uh, the thermal camera will capture the entire thing and we we can understand each and every problem we know we have listed about 15 problems and we know is it because of the shading is is it is it because of the cell crack or it is because of uh, something else or the junction box suppose if junction box fails so the junction box uh, uh, junction box is uh, so heated up and you can see that uh, when i see in the thermo can i can i have that ah uh, uh, that yeah book. one of the book not that the other one yeah those two give you we have standards now and you know it was not there at all In, in fact even uh, with 20 years we did not have this see uh, this is a european uh, uh, this thing standard uh, the picture should be like this i can show you um, i have uh, this thing also here so you will be able to see the power, yeah module you can see the see radiologist doctors do something you know they take uh, x ray and this is nothing short of an x ray uh, uh, like this we take and you can see we we have the spots here that means we go to that uh, google uh, coordinates we spot it we come back and spot it and then we know um, of course that's again an advanced uh, technology uh, with artificial intelligence we, we the computer itself will identify this is the particular thing what we do is we actually uh, feed that data so for each particular failure suppose if it is uh, one particular uh, string is failed in this and one bypass has failed one bypass diode has failed and we know the pattern the pattern itself we know what kind of problem the module is facing for each and every 
15 to 20 defects are there. For each of them, we have defined, and we'll show you if you visit our this thing. You can directly keep the camera there. So with a thermal camera, if I can take a, a, a switch on that and capture here, and I can see your head is red hot. So that means the more heat is there. So now I'm uh, speaking more probably, I'm also generating more heat. So which part of the body is actually generating more heat? So here also, same thing. So uh, it is an advanced technology with the artificial intelligence. We can detect using the drones from the, from otherwise, you know, we have uh, uh, in one place, we have about 800 and, uh, Six, uh, 60s, I think, 860 uh, megawatt one power plant in Karnul. And if I have to inspect each and every uh, uh, module, and it will take about a four months, five months. So it is uh, not advisable. So what we do, we run the drone system there. That's where the technology uh, helps us. Okay, let's move on. So 100% renewable energy. Okay, I'll just keep moving like this. Okay, is that 30,000 years ago? So you can see here, firewood, 300 years, fossil fuels, a billion years. Sir, can you zoom in, sir? Okay. Well, something to understand, you know, how the technology has uh, really um, come through uh, from almost 35 to 40 years. So how the dollar, I mean, the price per unit watt, per watt, you can see here, 1977. It's a coincidence that, you know, 77 became 77, 1977. Here also the same thing, almost seven, it became this thing. So here it broke. Here, 2019, 2020 is also the same because of the pandemic. There is no increase, there is no decrease. Probably it is increasing. So there is no, uh, yeah, you have something to say? Okay. So uh, let's move on. Uh, even solar technology should be scrutinized. How clean are the clean technology energies? How renewable energies are renewable energies? So please understand. See, uh, you, are, you are digging up the, you are digging up for the quartz. When you touch the, when you do the mining, then it is not a renewable technology. You just keep in the back of your mind. You don't have to worry too much on that. So clean technology, because uh, you can see here, uh, mining is the process. This is all the process. What you saw earlier, I showed you, okay? And this is uh, uh, basically happens. Uh, this, is, this is generally white. This also is there. If it is white, it is more uh, uh, pure. It's almost about 99.9% pure SiO2, not silicon. So uh, the sand is, uh, uh, let us say Sahara sand, it is only 68% uh, uh, silicon dioxide, okay? So we need, uh, uh, we need this also. What is this? Wood chip, wood chip. So we have here, we have here quartz. We are putting this crucible, uh, uh, the coal. Uh, this is the coal. You're all surprised. We need coal to produce silicon so that we produce solar cells, modules. So, uh, I mean, you know, you need to understand these things in a very larger perspective to know where we are heading and where really we have to head, okay? So that's the MG silicon. This is one process and this we call it as a smeltering furnace. The temperature is more than 2000 degrees centigrade here. So this is the carbothermic reaction. 6.6 .6 tons of materials is required to produce one ton of silicon which is the foundation for our solar cells and hence solar modules. Let us save coal to generate solar power, not to produce uh, this thing, you know, our future generations should have some coal to see 
how the coal looked like because it is finite even the quartz is also going is a finite one and if you keep on digging it maybe 1000 years 10000 years it is going to exhaust therefore we need to make efficient use of these materials so that's that's where is the disturbing aspect you know, people engineers you know the young engineers like you know uh, we are all depending on uh, uh, china and other countries uh, we have quartz enough best quartz available in the world in india but we don't make silicon this is a very sad state of affairs so we should make that we are not supposed to make only solar modules okay uh, no con conventional power no evacuation of solar power that is another thing see unless we have storage system we can't transport it we need we we, we need solar power power to be transported to another place we need grid electrical grid i have 1 gigawatt solar power plant i generate dc convert that into electricity using inverters and we have all that electrical substation from the substation there are actually grid lines going to distributed everywhere now the dc power that is generated has to be transported you must have the electricity the grid line to be on it cannot be outaged there should be power in the grid line for the generated electricity of the solar power plant to be transported did you get this point that's very primary important that means the energy mix is not actually that you know i cannot make a statement standing here because i love solar energy clean technology renewable energy it does not make any sense let me tell you it 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 cannot be between one technology to the other technology competition no never what's your name amit amit amir uh, can you explain what is a, a, a fruit basket what are a, when do you, when do you call a basket as a fruit basket yes so i will put only banana the big basket i mean can you can you call it as a fruit basket it is a banana basket or only apple apple basket so if it has to be a fruits basket it has to have mix of fruits including the watermelon apple mango what not that's the energy mix also the same you should have fossil fuel based so if you don't have the the fossil fuel based power grid line and whatever i produce i cannot transport it but nowadays another very great technology that has come up now advanced technology that is the storage system if i have to talk on that i have to talk for another 2 hours each and everything i am mentioning every class can be 2 to 2 hours so i am just opening the lid of your head where you can search for the information and so the storage then lithium batteries have come which are most efficient there are so many other battery technologies sodium based technologies the copper based technologies even in the if you touch the battery technology and it is for uh, electric vehicles batteries or it is for storage for the uh, power plants and there we are working actually the pumped up storage is coming up we are working on that from our company what we do in a brief nutshell we pump the water to higher reservoir during day using the solar energy and that reservoir is like a storage battery system for me and i can use that bat, uh, the water in the night to run the turbine and produce the hydro energy hydro energy so it is actually hybrid system so very advanced things have been happening actually that is very interesting for you more than uh, learning these things but these are very very uh, basic things you need to understand okay so we need your grid power 
of the conventional energy to evacuate the solar energy. That's the point I'm trying to make here. <clears throat> okay, so I'll rush through. So this is uh, how uh, I'll just quickly uh, wrap up for things. The module is made like this. The cell and put into module, we call this solar cell, then the solar module, there's a solar panel and the solar array, the inter plant, okay? I wanted to show one uh, video, but you know, I'll skip. I will uh, give the link actually. And you go to the YouTube, uh, put uh, solar cell manufacturing, solar module manufacturing, just make a note, mental note of it. And you can see beautiful uh, videos uh, from A to Z. And I don't have to explain that actually. So, uh, ah, that you can, uh, yes, you can share that. I have this here, but you know, it will take unnecessarily my time. And my effort is that, you know, I want to tell you something which you don't find in the Google. Yes, you will find it in the Google, but you know, I want to be the link there. Okay, great. And yes, he, this slide is very important. Here you can see uh, crystalline silicon technology, gallium arsenide, and yeah, I'm able to see here better. This is the third, uh, 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 you you also see uh, periodic table. Yeah, periodic table, you know, is very important. So in my cabin, I always keep one big periodic table. You might have seen that. So please take a printout, color printout, and then put it, and then see which are all the third uh, column, fourth column. Huh? So that will open up your uh, basics again. Okay. And here, see amorphous silicon, CDT, CIGS, this copper, zinc, tin, sulfur. Advanced technologies, you want to know? And these are all the new technologies are coming up now. We, we cannot get stuck with polysilicon, aromatic silicon, or only monosilicon, only crystalline. There are a lot of things are coming. There is uh, something called, uh, um, let me tell you, uh, there's a printable solar cells, organic solar cells. So if, uh, if a man can wear a, cells, a cell, shirt printed with solar cells, while he walks, he can generate the solar. We have that technology here, okay? Then very importantly, another technology has come, which is the perovskite. These are all under the thin, thin film. Uh, <clears throat> I will show you one slide, very, very important slide. You can go back and then download it as a NREL, National Renewable Energy Laboratory of USA. Every year for the past 25 years, uh, 30, 30 years, they're publishing every year, what are the new, these things. That itself is enough actually, it is there. I will show you that, okay? So uh, there are so many uh, technologies. This is the one. Dye-sensitized solar cell. Dye-sensitized, whatever I said, you know, a woman can wear a sari which is printed with this thing. When she walks, she can produce electricity. That technology is already there. We worked on that, but you know, they are not commercially available. Okay. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> quickly, how much time you can give me, madam? Give me how more? Ten minutes. Sure. No, so I don't want to scare them. Okay, so see here, in 1954, when the Bell Lab came with a solar cell, in the same area, its efficiency was actually like one half bulb, you can see here, one third of a 60 watt bulb, in the same area it used to produce. That means you can relate that efficiency, how low it was, okay? now. Uh, you see here, in 2012, so many years difference, okay? Same same area, 15% efficiency came. It became 20 to 200, 10 times more, okay? Next, you see here, today we are standing here, but this is also in 2020, if I put, in fact, within 
18 to 19 and 20, we have reached actually 23, 24, 25%. We call it as PERC technology, which I will uh, touch base in. You know. um, uh, passivated emitter, rare contact cell. What is PERC? P-E-R-C. That will come there, I think. So we'll uh, run through that slide. Okay. I like this slide very much, you know why? Because uh, we used to produce uh, in 1980s, these kind of cells. With my own hands, I used to produce solar cells of this nature, okay? They used to be like this. And you know, what is the size? Here we have the size. Um, they are actually 166 and mm, 166 mm by 166 mm each cell. And uh, uh, now, we are getting 210 also. The wafer size is increased and uh, the efficiency is increased. The technology to connect the E cells, bus bar technology is increased like that. You can see from here, this is 1980s and this is present. Okay. I will rush through. Ah, this is the one. Um, you just make a note of this. This is best research cell efficiencies in the world. If, if, if you don't know this, you don't know solar. So um, basically, you can see here, multi-junction cells, this uh, uh, violet color, shall I say? Is it violet? I can ask ladies, they are very good in color. This, this one is blue, green, red. OK, let us call it as red because orange is also there. Anyway, so the it, it is the latest one. You can see here 2020. Okay, next year again, 2021 will be added. Okay, they are going to publish that. So in this, you can see the efficiencies. These are efficiencies. So that at this end, from 1975, is being tracked. You can see here. And I was telling about perovskite, which is just came very recently. Perovskite here, this fellow, red within that yellow line. Where? It is, it is not started here. It is here. It is already skyrocketing with efficiency. So new advanced technology that is coming. And whatever I'm going to speak about the crystalline technology, our cadmium telluride, they all go absolute. Remember this. So therefore, this is very important for you. Okay. So to understand which are the emerging technologies. I don't want to get into the inside the slide. You download this. And you will share that uh, this thing also. If you want, you can share uh, uh, this thing. Okay. This is... Uh, to highlight other uh, areas. Just to give a comparison, the thickness of uh, thin film and cadmium telluride and things like that. See, 180 microns, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, 180, 180 microns, I was telling you. Uh, you can see here. The crystalline thickness, we call them as thick film. We call these as thin film. See here, the human hair is about 100 microns. So just to give the comparison. Okay, so it is another 80 microns higher in its thickness. So the red blood corpuscles have uh, seven microns. So thin film, we can see here 0.6 microns it is lesser than even our RBC. So we have to, we handle with the nanotechnologies. Okay, okay, next. These are various uh, structures of uh, this thing. So uh, with your permission, I just uh, proceed uh, further, okay? Uh, new technologies for electric vehicles, okay? Electric cars. So I just, uh, this one will be ended here. I have other things, so I will always, uh, we can do that. So you can see here, I just end it with a different uh, this thing. So what is this uh, actually? 
paddy okay so land solar plants okay this is land is required so much land is required okay and what is this okay and we call wind energy we deal with wind what is this army the previous one was air force yes army air force navy and here hydro energy all these things we do in green co one of the uh, multinationals today green co you must uh, go to the website and we are proud to be is the ap company so oh, i am proud to be part of this uh, amazing renewable energy company so green co thank you so much yes yes yeah yeah just uh, as i explained um if you look at the uh, cells inside it can be 60 cells or it can be 72 cells and they are actually um square if you if you see them perfect square and if uh, th those are actually polycrystalline or multi crystalline there has to be a square edge i mean it's a corner is actually pointed if you see yourself if actually they are blunt as i showed you on the white board so you will be i mean uh, you find those cut if they are not cut actually during your slicing of the in got so you have removed that uh, extra uh, portion leaving that circumference of the in got actually so essentially when you see the panel with the multi uh, mono crystalline you see those white spots there so it's like a diamond in between four cells are joined together with if it is a multi crystalline you don't have uh, uh, any gap there you don't see the the back side is the white one you saw in the module that's a tedler we call back cover sheet it's a back sheet so that actually through and through there's a toughened glass as i showed you in the you know man, uh, architecture of the solar panel the toughened glass eva and tedler in between the cells are sandwiched uh, between the glass and the tedler the tedler thing the white diamonds are seen through to your naked eye so if it is there are no diamonds seen white ones they are actually multi crystalline and if you see them they are mono crystalline okay yeah yes very good question in fact uh, i uh, when i was in bhl for 12 years we used to manufacture svd svd uh, dc devices actually for power transmission uh, there is um, Uh, we are working towards uh, making it as a commercial option but there are certain issues actually because uh, uh, the dc transmission has its own problem actually so it is not like uh, uh, bharat has a context uh, contest uh, you know uh, tesla actually wanted uh, uh, it is not tesla no uh, so ac ac power yeah and yet yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nikola Tesla wanted uh, it to be AC. Yeah, which what we have today. Actually, uh, DC also can be transported, and there are some power plants already available. We'll we'll discuss more on that. It is possible. Uh, so I have answered your question. Okay, details we'll talk later. Yes, I want more questions uh, like this. Questions can be anything. questions can never be silly answers can be silly so therefore ask any question so so i have a very silly question people say that 
I have a very silly question. So I keep uh, telling them, questions can never be silly. Answers can be silly. So you please ask. They can never be wrong. So if you don't ask questions, then I will feel proud that you know I have solved all your questions without even being. Yeah. Yes. Great. Uh, there are several ways actually. Oh, this very interesting question, you know, which I wanted to tell this during part of the, this thing. Okay. Uh, I'm answering this question actually. I repeat the question. Uh, if, no, no, I will repeat the question if I have understood the question correctly. How do you identify a particular cell is uh, not functioning in the panel? A defective solar cell. Is that right? Okay. You give me, I mean, this is a challenge actually, which I have proved actually, but uh, so be prepared for a kind of a, a, a surprise here. So you give me five manufacturer solar panels. I'm answering the question, okay. You put them in front of me. Uh, I would have done something in front of you, uh, like a magician does. Uh, like, you know, it will sound like a magic, but uh, I'm not a magician. Magicians do the trick, but I don't do the trick. Magicians do not give the trick, but I give the trick to you at the end of the magic show. Okay, now what is the magic? You, uh, you come here and you tie my eyes, and then I will close my eyes and touch the panel. Okay, I will touch the panel, and I will move my hand here, and, and I will stop here, and I will say, this panel is that that particular cell is defective. That is basically like a doctor touching your nadi or taking the temperature and telling you know, what. So somewhere I stop. So because that particular cell is hot, as I already explained to you, no great deal, isn't it? But let me tell you, you give me five manufacturers companies, fresh this thing not in the field they say that you know my module is great my module is great and then my module will uh, uh, give more efficiency and more output and it will survive for 25 years he cannot guarantee his own life and he is guaranteeing 25 years for the panel but the challenge is this as soon as the module comes from the factory i will do this trick all the five manufacturers companies, I will touch and tell you, whoever wants to know that module A, manufacturer A will survive for 22 years and module D, probably it would die within five years. And module C, it will crawl through 10 years. Okay, so like this, I will tell all the this thing by touching them. How do I do this? Is it is it a magic? No, I'm an engineer. So the science behind is this. Uh, actually, I'm very sorry. I wanted to. I have four or five presentations where I want to get into where they are really interested in uh, related to these kind of things. Uh, the equivalent circuit diagram of the solar cell is. That you know, I'm just uh, draw this. See the equivalent circuit diagram. I, as I told you, it is nothing but a diode. So is it minus? Yes, sir. Thank you for correcting me. So now you have. What is the difference between ordinary diode and a solar cell diode? Ah, yes, uh, you are close to the answer. It generates current. That's the difference. There, see, you have seen this always, the diode. But if I add this, it becomes solar cell. So now let me complete. Oh, this is the ideal diode. Ideal diode is the one which exists only in idea. Yes or no? What is the spelling of ideal? Is it correct? 
So if I remove L, that which exists only in the idea is not practical. So, but what it makes it practical? This is series resistance. What's what? Sri Leka, if I ask her something, you no, know, you will take lot of this thing, care. Some resistance is there to tell the answer or tell something. Isn't it? Everywhere. Always there is some resistance in the life. Always. This should be zero, ideally. If I smile in the world, that is the only thing that will come back immediately without any resistance. But there are some people in the world who will take time to smile. I have come across that. I don't know whether you have come across or not. When you become as much old as me, I think you will find. Is it correct to do that? I mean, if you, you smile. You smile at me. Then I will, uh, like this, let me think. I had one boss earlier. He never smiled. He never smiled. And he smiled one day. We are all surprised. And you know, actually, I had smiled yesterday and he smiled today. That is the lag, time lag. Okay. Now, zero, it has to be zero actually. There should not be any resistance to smile. Okay. Now, you have here another component, which is this. Sorry? Loud air. Old man is speaking so loud and then young people. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I didn't have even breakfast here. Okay. Uh, this is shunt resistance. Okay. Now, this should be zero or it should be infinity. Your affection should be infinity. You know, in fact, I'm uh, writing a book uh, like uh, relating to the human, uh, this thing, the circuit, solar cells. Uh, I'm writing a book called Zen Solar. Gen solar. If I want to measure power of the module, solar power of the panel, what I do? I don't take the multimeter or PV analyzer and all these things. I just go and touch it and then tell this is this much power. And that should be the level of understanding of your technology. So if you go to your doctor, you know, he will put, you know, just I have a fever. Then in you know, 10 days, he will keep you in the hospital and he will make almost pay around 1 lakh rupees only for the testing. Okay, now you have the, uh, this one, this is called variable load, RL, RL. So now this is the equivalent uh, circuit diagram. So uh, there is a fill factor, there is efficiency, short circuit current, open circuit voltage, then uh, series resistance, shunt resistance, all these things are measured using that STC and the sun simulator. So this is the equivalent uh, circuit diagram. So where were you? Any question? <laughs> so no, no the, uh, so if I had a bad track or uh, just, just wanted to. Okay, so there is much more to this. How I was telling you how I am doing this trick. You can also do this. Once I explain it, see, this is called fill factor. So, um, should not fall down. See, this is the IV characteristic. Okay. And uh, <coughs> this is the red one. This is red. Why oh, here? See, uh, this is the poor module, our poor cell. And this is the best cell. Now, uh, suppose if I have the best, uh, this is the current, this is the voltage. Uh, what is the cutting voltage of a silicon solar cell? Cutting voltage of a silicon? Yes. Point? Yes, perfect, 
in our so advanced solar technologies we are getting point uh, eight until you know we have done something but you know we are trying to achieve one more than the ideal uh, cut in voltage so diode this one you know what we say uh, this is nothing but this thing this one and this is a forward this is a reverse so if i re uh, topple this this is what it is coming here it's a forward this is a forward one okay now this is the short circuit current if i short that i get here zero zero voltage and if i rheostat if i vary the rheostat from zero it is a short and open open circuit voltage the cut in voltage becomes your open circuit voltage what is the that for the uh, uh, germanium both are semiconductors yeah 0.3 so why we are not using that because it does not have as much cut in voltage as this much that is the the uh, silicon now another thing another very important thing why we are not using germanium germanium does not lend itself very nicely for manufacturing like silicon helps Sil silicon helps very well it lends itself okay therefore we are using silicon okay and it is abundant germanium is not abundant silicon is abundant oxygen is uh, 68 67% in the earth how much 67% and silicon is 28% in the atmosphere you have on the earth crust you have 67% oxygen 28% silicon and rest are all you know magnesium calcium potassium all this all other elements of the periodic table somebody can open the google and cross check what the prabhak is saying am i right he is already doing bharat is already doing it i want him to lithosphere yeah and the earth crust earth crust so elemental level i am asking 67% oxygen and next is 28% silicon is 28% on the earth crust therefore you know we have abundant uh, material for solar energy see on the sky in the sky we have sun uh, i will ask a fundamental question why is i mean we call uh, uh, in village you know when i used to take the lantern and go there sunlight is free why are you costing me solar lantern why it is costing 1000 rupees you should give me free yes while sunlight is free silicon is not free some things come free but you need to slog to get to uh, you take the you you take the cards make it mg silicon poly silicon then in the got then wafer then solar cell and then module oh my god so much where who has to put the money entrepreneurs like you he wants to become an entrepreneur you you lifted your hand huh? remember okay so therefore it is here fill factor is very very important many people hide this factor only efficiency no what is efficiency i scored 100 out of 100 marks but dhila what is the is iit man scored 100 out of 100 but he suicided so field mein rakhe to to nothing so efficiency don't just look at the efficiency look at the fill factor what is the fill factor so you have to tell me ganti uh, i mean you have to put the bell maestri ki bell kotta leppudu so efficiency is output divided by input it is not zero and one okay i am not speaking uh, digital technology software 
this is output by input what is output watts of the solar panel and input irradiance light, uh, light we call it as irradiance or intensity or insulation all are same so that one is stc 25 degree centigrade 100 milli watt per centimeter square or 1000 watts per meter square okay now now only i'm started getting the, i'm also interested in talking because i i'm using the board <laughs> okay now okay see this one you got efficiency now irradiance 100 milliwatts per centimeter square into area then only it will become full then output you got so this is efficiency what is spill factor this is also power here we call generally as peak power peak power is peak power is this area under the curve this is uh, power one uh, pm1 pm2 pm1 is greater than pm2 obviously so r this is uh, r the okay not into uh, vm into im divided by uh, voc into isc for an ideal curve for an ideal cell uh, v, uh, voc equals vm isc equals im so therefore this to get cancelled therefore it becomes unity 100 percent which is in ideal condition but not so because you have some resistance here maybe about 100 uh, ohms and here it is around i oh, no, sorry this will be around uh, less than 0.1 ohm actually and this one will be uh, say around 100 ohms 100 ohms so therefore it will never be this thing what is the practical one then it is around 80 more than 80 percent but it is never become 100 percent now so we are working towards that actually how to take it to the this thing so now this fellow is efficiency is like you know 100 percent marks gaining but this fellow will tell you whether he survives for 25 years or 10 years or die within two years we have panels flooded in the country today which are already dying which were put some time back so there are some companies some modules which are brilliantly performing we have that also so it should be very careful about selecting the panels these parameters help okay any more questions good question uh, what about crack panels okay so um, we can't repair them it is not harmful like quartz is available in our you know? so um, but you, i'm uh, i know where you are coming from it's you you are asking about recycling so the defect panels cracked panels means you know i was understanding the cell is cracked and all huh? okay. <laughs> yeah yeah so they have to be um, uh, recycled actually but it's unfortunate that india has no policy as of now like japan has uh, germany has for the recycling we are working on we are uh, we are one of the um, circular economy economic company where you know what we put here we actually bring it back and recycle and we are working on that uh, recycling so the question is uh, that what we what do we do with uh, uh, the the failed modules the broken modules so uh, at the end of another 20 25 years uh, probably whole of uh, half of our india is going to land become a graveyard of solar panels so what are you going to do them i mean with them we, we, we cannot cremate them it's just like that okay yes yes Bharat, i think you have some points to add there yeah
Yeah, we can, as he rightly mentioned, uh, you have to take the silicon out and the silver that is used for printing uh, cells, that also is taken to that extent. And uh, glass increasing now. And we are using a lot of silver in the advanced technologies like perk technology to get the higher efficiencies. So therefore, uh, it is another burden. We are consuming uh, more and more uh, uh, technology, I mean, uh, silver and then glass. The glass is nothing but quartz. And then again, we, we have to get it back. So to the extent of 95%, we can recycle the material. Very good question. What's your name? Mohit Patel. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so we, we are working on that. If you want more information, we'll work on content. So, yeah. Yes, they are same actually. Solar tower is actually, you put, uh, this is the solar tower, you put the parabolic reflectors, you focus the all the energy, and there is a liquid or the water, which will convert into the steam or fumes, whatever, and that will, that power is used, steam power used to uh, run the turbines. So it is the means of uh, converting the solar energy, solar light into, uh, the steam inside the, the solar tower. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good. <laughs> yes, Green Co will be giving the best in the world. Uh, yes, because uh, we are working on what already people are have failed not to give. To the customers and we are going to use our own panels therefore you know we don't want to prepare uh, the what shall i say uh, the not a good uh, defective uh, roti chapati and all these things you know for our own eating if we want to sell probably in mass production so we are going to use we are going to produce uh, best you know but you know okay that apart let me tell you in, in you are telling in india uh, international international uh, um, see, China, China has advanced a lot in the world. <clears throat> the research took place in America and Germany and all. China mastered it for the past one to one and a half decades, uh, uh, how to mass produce. But the, essentially, the technology came from the United States and the Germany. They did not know the technology. So, China is certainly producing more efficiency panels and giving it a very low cost. No country, no company is able to produce solar modules. Of course, all the rest of the things are the backward reverse integration, backward integration. China is successful, but unfortunately, uh, uh, China has never given attention to. So if you want to say, you know, they have produced the best solar panels in the world. Yes, I can give them full marks there. But they have not produced the most reliable panels in the world. We want efficient and re reliable and durable. We are, we have the wherewithal in grid to to make these things because we understand uh, what works, what does not work. So it is not the question of just producing things efficiently. And you know, uh, in fact, you know, I, I generally keep telling this, uh, the relation between quality and reliability. Can anybody define this? I'm, ask, I'm answering your question. What's your name? Chaitanya, good. What is? The relation between these two, actually, quality, reliability is the Q in time domain. Reliability is quality in time domain. I have this product. I'm a marketing man and I want to sell to you. I open this. I, I will tell. Uh, this writing, I will demonstrate. I demonstrate that it is working today. But 
it should work tomorrow it should work after one month so at the car it is it is starting today is a quality it is moving it is quality but it should work endlessly it is working tomorrow after one year after five years after 10 years after 25 years after 50 years it is working that is reliability so the therefore the quality in time domain is reliability what you have to look for is reliability and durability and this does not mean that the quality yes mine is a quality product it is a very weak statement it's a reliable product what you so in that context japan i mean um, china has failed they have produced great uh, panels okay good ah so we now <laughs> i will you have to i'll give some exercise to you work backward we will produce 2000 megawatt of solar panels okay but we need solar cells uh, back to back okay in one year 365 days so now you can calculate so that is actually automated system so uh, it's a very tricky question uh, anything i answer will be wrong so therefore i am answering so that you know you yourself uh, make the best judgment so because um, we have in hyderabad when i came to hyderabad in 1994 we were the first company to set up the solar cell plant it was very manual today everything is automated uh, have you seen uh, uh, this uh, ppe kit fellows working in the hospitals so in the solar cell technology in, inside we wear those kind of things yeah yeah in that you could have seen one man very less people but you know they will be with their ppe kit everything they look like uh, astronauts and uh, anyway thanks to pandemic everyone is looking like a <laughs> astronaut now i made a joke on this you know you know <laughs> yeah you know one man actually went into coma after got, got admitted to the pandemic okay i think pandemic is going on you understand pandemic joke very well therefore i just want to conclude with this so one man went uh, as a pandemic inside the hospital and then he went into coma for some multiple uh, reasons uh, failed then uh, after many uh, days he got back but you know uh, before uh, actually Uh, before pandemic just the onset of pandemic uh, he was he did not even see the ppe kit and all he went into coma when he came back then he saw all these people then he said you know is he in the space i am in the space <laughs> i mean i mean mars then he started the hippie pray and a eureka like that you know today we have any anyway, later side thank you so much uh, if you don't have any other questions so thank you yes very much very much but world, uh, current will remain same okay i used to think you know transformer is a great uh, equipment when i was studying electronics no electrical thoda thoda tha so then i said i will increase voltage and i will make the power but what about current it will remain the same if you increase the current voltage will remain the same so nature will not allow you to do just endlessly in fact i wanted to share something i will i will send it to you you share them i know i i wanted to end up my uh, not with a pandemic example so i wanted to show that uh, demonstration which we did the research um that is about est technology um if i connect one small device of this size just this size in the back side of the uh, panel that will actually Uh, this uh, device uh, uh, it is um, it is going to enhance your question the key answer it is going to enhance by almost about two times we came close to this thing i will say, show you the demonstration i mean you know but we'll, we'll we are working on on that uh, how to really make it happen okay 
Yeah. So, thank you so much, and uh, I. Otherwise, I will keep talking. Okay, so you have to come here. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much for the time and the great information you gave to us. I am so happy to be here with you. I request to add two points. Okay. Okay. I will sit with your permission. Yeah, yeah. I'll just hand over this mic to Mr. Bharat. Thank you, Bharat. Just. Okay, I think uh, Dr. Barki has uh, said everything that has been has to be said under the sun. But uh, I would like to conclude by saying, you know, I am your or more or less your age. Okay. I mean, might be a little bit older. Uh, average age here might be around 27, 21. Okay, you are much older. <laughs> okay, I'm 36. So, uh, yeah. So, but still, I think the mind is still about the same uh, thing. So we 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 share. So the world needs leaders like my uh, like uh, Dr. Barki said. Uh, the world needs leaders. Uh, there is. A harrowing lack of leadership in the world today. Uh, the leaders we have are not, they don't meet, meet up to our standards. We all know that. But unfortunately, it's a democracy. We have to elect, an, elect a leader. <laughs> so we, uh, we should, each one is a leader uh, by uh, himself. Uh, you lead your life. You're a master of your own, uh, your, your, like they say, you're the architect of your future. You're the master of your own universe. Each one of you is a universe and you inspire your own self and uh, march on. Uh, th that's all I would like to say. Uh, thank you for giving this uh, opportunity and hope we keep meeting and uh, taking India. India is a great country and we take it to greater heights. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> time really we are so happy and we are so lucky enough uh, to have a moving solar encyclopedia uh, i'm expecting from you like uh, we'll have so many sessions like this to enlighten our students on solar and, and different technologies and i know you are a polymath you can talk uh, continuously eight hours without stop. <laughs> okay, but uh, we're expecting so many sessions from you like this, sir. Okay, let's plan for that in future. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. <laughs>